Hello, I'm Colin Fisher and this is CDF Images. I'm currently in an undisclosed location somewhere in Glasgow with graffiti artist known as Clyde Banksy. I'm looking to secure an interview today to find out an insight into his work which is often controversial. It is most often talked about, notably uh, with the Sturgeon and Lies was one of the most recent ones. I was looking to find out better understanding and in order to secure this interview today, Cloud Banksy does not wish to have his identity known. So we have kept his identity anonymous. Uh, so Cloud Banksy, uh, you have a specific kind of style. What is your motivation behind this? The motivation behind what I have been doing starts in October when probably a number of years of frustration boiled over when Nicola Sturgeon was caught lying about the who, what, where and when of she met Alex Salmond. I found that this wasn't being portrayed in mainstream Scottish media, never mind national media. It was almost as though a blanket had been put over everything and we were living in a vacuum. I got frustrated, took it, bought a tin of paint and wrote Sturgeon lied. Never for a moment did I think it would gain any traction. A lot of people have said you're defacing public property and strongly disagree with your messages. What would you say to them? I tend to agree with them. However, there has been probably a couple of thousand years of political dissent, people writing on walls. You only have to look at the movie The Life of Brian, when one of the protagonists wrote Romans Go Home, and he spent the next three or four hours being lectured by a centurion about his bad use of grammar. It's a very simple, effective way of getting a political message. I'm probably one of the few people who does something of any, in any context of anti-SNP, anti-Sturgeon graffiti. You've only got to look at the graffiti in the West End of Glasgow that said uh, Boris is a fanny. Whether he is or whether he's not, that became na that got national traction. All because somebody got a spray paint, wrote a couple of words, it is effective. Under British law, uh, you're considered a vandal. What would you be your view on this? Can't disagree with that. Okay, well fair enough, at least you're honest. Uh, why do you uh, use the double S in the style of the Nazi SS okay. in your graffiti? The SS, when I wrote the first Sturgeon lied, was to remind people that Sturgeon has been quoted as saying, my fellow nationalists. This is a party that was started by Arthur Donaldson, a follower of the Führer and the Nazi ideology. She may want to deny that she's a nationalist, but that is exactly what she is. Nationalism is one of the most dangerous forms of politics that is known to mankind. So, Clyde Banks, what political persuasion would you say that you are about? I'm non-aligned, pro-union. I have voted for all the union parties and I will continue to do so in May, uh, splitting my vote. And how but do you, but uh, it, will be, it will be a pro-unionist vote. And how do you see the elections going in from just now with the, with the, the way the polls are going. We've got a little over nine weeks between now and the, uh, the elections in May. I think the Nationalist Party had its high watermark a few weeks ago when she was seen to be in control of the narrative. She is no longer in control of the narrative. Her polished uh, performances at uh, lunchtime, which are no more than a party political broadcast, the wheels started to come off that last week when she turned it into a, an Alex Salmon diatribe. If, if the analogy that I would use if we were at the top of the hill with their support, we won't reach the bottom of the hill with their support, but if we were to maybe come 10, 7% down, that would be enough to put them up shit creek. Going on, listen, who are your political heroes and foes, I guess? Uh, Past and present. Yeah, uh, they're quite diverse. I mean, you could pick the obvious ones. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King, Winston Churchill, Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda, a man who fought against genocide, against the Tutsi people. A beverage, a man who hauled Britain out of abject poverty. Wolfenden, a man who decriminal, helped to decriminalise homosexuality. Sophie Shaw and her brother Hans, why in no way am I saying that I'm anything like them, had a campaign of pamphleting and graffiti against the Nazis in Munich. Sophie, her brother and others were executed after a show trial, uh, after being caught uh, throwing pamphlets around the university. These are my heroes. My foes, <laughs> There's, I don't have a foe 
and probably at this moment the person that's my clear and present danger is uh, Nicola Sturgeon. One of your main messages is Sturgeon lies. If you had five minutes with the First Minister, what would you say to her? Well, if I was in a cast, cast away in a desert island with Nicola Sturgeon and had one luxury to take with me, I would take all the material that has so far been withheld from the committee, uh, in my view, unlawfully. This, inf this documentation confirms that Nicola Sturgeon has lied continually over the Alex Salmond affair and has lied to the people of Scotland, has lied to the Parliament, and I think that for that alone she should be forced to step down. Now, there are people who also agree with your messages. Uh, what would you say to them? I would say uh, I'm not in this for the likes. However, it is uh, gratifying to see positive comments people sharing the message. That's actually probably the most important thing. A lot of people feel they've been left alone, ignored, hung out to dry, and st almost treated like a mushroom and kept in the dark. People like myself have, a, I don't know, raised awareness of anti-nationalist politics, and whether you're living in Scotland or any other part of the United Kingdom, it lets you know that there's people who are wanting to push back against the narrative that has been portrayed over the last 14 years. So on the signposting aspect, uh, you use social media. I myself reached out to you to secure this interview uh, via Twitter, um, and your Twitter handle is at Clyde Banksy. So I suppose the question is, why do you feel it necessary to spray paint public property to air your views when you could do this on social media or other such media platforms instead? That's a good point. Uh, like many people, I've got more than one Twitter handle. Over the years, I've commented, I've uh, replied to people, and you know, get a few likes. As I said before, I'm not in this for the likes, but really, you're howling into the wind. There's hundreds of people doing the exact same as myself. Obviously, there's a, a few people who get traction, have followers, but I can tell by my Twitter analysis that the spray painting that I do has tens of thousands of views. That reaches far more people than I could have ever done with just writing a few lines, a few hundred words, a few hundred letters rather, uh, on a, a, my previous Twitter handle. Okay, well, uh, regarding that then, so um, about the political message again, do you see yourself more of an artist or a protester or a political activist or something else? And by, by no stretch of the imagination, I'm an artist. Um, the only reason I chose the name Clyde Banksy, but in fact, I used to have to uh, send the, the pictures out to other people. They would post it and somebody I thought quite wittily said Clyde Banksy, and I said, "Well, that's that, that's the name then." But I'm not an, I'm not an artist in any stretch of the imagination. As you can see, I would say that I'm a, a protester. That's it. You know, I'm protesting. That's, that's that's the best way of putting it. So, touching on that then, uh, Clyde Banksy with Banksy the artist. Uh, do you feel that you're ripping off Banksy, or is it more of a plain words and the idea of what Banksy's doing? And you know, it's, Clyde just a, it's just simply a play on words. Okay, well, what do you think of uh, the Alex Salmond scandal? I've been following, following the Alex Salmond story obviously since say uh, 2018, when he was, in my view, hung out to dry. It's taken a long time. It's taken, as he says, two trials two judges and one jury, but he's been proved to be 100% innocent. This is the biggest scandal in modern day Scottish, in fact, British politics. If this had happened at Westminster, Boris Johnson or the incumbent Prime Minister would have been out in the backside a long time ago. This has been left to rumble and fester. It's like an open wound in our society. As Alex Salmond said, it's not the institutions that are rotten, it is the head of the institutions, the judiciary, the government, and the civil service. This is coming to an end. And when you say it's coming to an end, uh, do you see this toppling the Scottish Government, the SNP, Nicola Sturgeon, um, or do you see them winning the election and then the scandal that, that's of a, being brushed in the car? That's a good point. Whether she survives until the May election is up for debate, but she is now damaged. It's to be seen whether she's damaged between the, below the waterline. We've got, as I said before, a little over nine weeks until the election and the only way is down. It's not going to take a 20 point slide for the SNP not to be in power. It'd be maybe increments of five, six, seven percent. And that, 
I can see them failing to cross the finishing line with or without the help of the Green Party. I ultimately think that Nicola Sturgeon is damaged goods and the equivalent of the men in grey suits in the Nationalist Party will have a, a word with her and say it's time to stand down. Well, well touching on that, uh, Jim Sellers, I know this is kind of going off track, but Jim Sellers came out just recently, a couple of days ago, saying that uh, regarding uh, the stench uh, was so bad and uh, he is one of the you know, founding uh, members of the SNP. Uh, what's your views on that? Well, Jim Sellers is certainly a a leading light and a father of the SNP, if not a founding father, he's certainly part of the SNP establishment and there are many people who will listen to what Jim Sillers says when he says that he's not going to vote for the Nationalist Party in May. As Mandy Rhodes from the Holyrood magazine said, a fish rots from the head down. I thought that was very apposite. So touching on uh, with the running theme of the SNP and the looming elections in the next uh, eight, nine weeks, um, what do you have planned for your next statement? Do you uh, envisage it will be something SNP, the Scottish Government, orientated or will it be something different? Well, I think the theme that uh, running through everything is uh, Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP. Uh, I'm keeping my powder dry at the moment. I, most things I do are spur of the moment. There's not a lot of pre-planning that goes into it, as you can see by the quality of the spray painting. Uh, I want to see what happens after the dust settles, uh, after Nicola Sturgeon's uh, committee meeting a couple of days ago. And, they, and then I'm sure I'll have something to say. But to be honest with you, I don't think this is going to, I don't think I, Clyde Banks, is going to go on for much longer. Uh, I think she's dust, whether it's through the election, she stands down, or is forced to stand down. So, so well, this is one of the questions, and I was going to ask how long you're going to keep doing, but uh, will Clyde Banks see uh, the being? Uh, become a non-entity or will it just become dormant or will it just stop happening? <laughs> Some people would say that I'm already a non-entity uh, but yeah it has a, sh a, a shelf life and it's coming towards the end of it so started in October and I'm sure by May it will have finished. And how many messages have you done to date approximately? Well, that's a good question. I, I guess about 40 something in, in the, I don't count them. Uh, most of them have been painted over and I've gone over, I've made into a blank canvas and I've returned uh, to that canvas. But uh, I've kept the record of them and it's uh, something to look back for, look back on in years to come, I'm sure. Okay. And then last of all then, uh, how do you feel, let's just go about COVID uh, and coronavirus. Uh, so with the pandemic that's over a year now, um, how do you feel about both the UK and Scottish governments are dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, you're interviewing me as Clyde Banks, and Clyde Banks, he doesn't really have much of a comment on it, other than probably in October, November, uh, I wrote the Jean Freeman granny killer. So Clyde Banks' views are really the care home scandal in Scotland. When it comes to England, health is of course devolved in Scotland. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that they're running it very well. However, uh, the care home scandal, that will be the legacy of this Scottish nationalist government. This will be the scandal that uh, will be ripped large. Well, this was going to be my last question, but then I want to just touch on what you just said there for me. Uh, so with the care home scandal, do you see uh, anyone doing jail time or anyone having brought over the coals or having to answer for after the Alex Hammond scandal uh, does settles? I don't know if anybody's going to go to jail, but I'm, I'm quite sure that there'll be various inquiries, committees, more obfuscation from some people. But yes, I think some people who are going to go into retirement in May, people like Jean Freeman, may and should be called to task uh, after this pandemic has uh, reached its end. When due process, when people want to get to the bottom of what's happened, uh, she and others will be uh, held to task. And do you feel uh, that Jean Freeman would be responsible, or would it be Nicola Sturgeon, or it would be a vicarious responsibility uh, generally held by cabinet? Well, as Harry S. Truman said, the buck stops here. Jean Freeman is our health secretary. She will be the one that's uh, front and foremost, uh, I'm sure, of any uh, inquiry. Um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of composite decisions, whether it be uh, scientists, politicians, but ultimately Jean Freeman will have a lot to answer for. Well, let's find out what happens over the coming months. Uh, Clyde Banksy, thank you very much for your time. And as I say, uh, we will 
uh, put this on to my YouTube channel on at CDF Images or CDF Images. And uh, many thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.